Okay, I think we'll get started. Uh, we have a, a group of panelists here to talk with you today. Uh, I'm going to kick things off. I'm Antonia Adesio. I'm the Executive Director at Marin Art and Garden Center. Pleasure to be with you on this extraordinarily beautiful October afternoon. We feel so lucky that we're here together virtually and we hope you've all been out in your gardens today. Uh, the gardens at the Marin Art and Garden Center are looking amazing at our, in our late summer glory and we hope you'll come and visit. Uh, we are so pleased to be working again with the Northern California Society of Botanical Artists whose show the Mount Tam Flora Leaf Gem opens today in the studio at Marin Art and Garden Center. Uh, this is a virtual reception as you can see, but it's a hybrid show, meaning that you can see it online, but you can also come to the center and enjoy it in person. And we hope that you'll find ways to do that. It will be open through the end of November. In the meantime, today, we're going to tell you a little bit about the show, how it came to be, the artists who are in it, uh, and give you an idea of the behind, kind of behind the scenes of work that went into creating this amazing collection. Uh, this is actually the fourth show presented in the studio uh, by the Northern California Society of Botanical Artists. Uh, we actually opened our new renovated studio gallery several years ago with the first show being the Alcatraz Flora Legium, followed by a show called Celebrate Trees, and then most recently Celebrate Silver for the 25th anniversary. And that was held in conjunction with the international ASBA show. So uh, it's been a long and wonderful partnership and we're just delighted uh, to be hosting the artists again today. And of course, Mount Tam is such a great and logical subject for the artists to explore. Uh, we look at it every day at Marin Art and Garden Center and we feel so grateful to be in its shadow because we benefit so much from the diversity of wildlife and flora there, as well as from the rain cloud it produces for us at the center. So uh, we feel close to that mountain. And we're, we're also delighted to be partnering with One Tam, which is such a fabulous organization doing amazing conservation work on the mountain. Uh, if you're not familiar with with One Tam's work, you'll find out more about that today from Monica Stafford. Uh, so it's my pleasure to welcome you here today. I wish I could see you all and shake your hands, but uh, one day that'll happen. And in the meantime, I'm delighted to introduce Mary Gillardi, who is the exhibition coordinator and one of the artists in the show. Mary, over to you. Hello, and welcome to the uh, show. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the Northern California Society of Botanical Artists first a Mount Tamalpais Floral Legion exhibit. We plan to have many more exhibits as we work on our project over the next few years and expand. Um, but it's going to take a while because there are a lot of plants on Mount Tamalpais. This evening, I'm going to tell you about the background of this exhibit sort of the what's, how's, why's, and who's of the exhibit. The first what that you probably want to know is what is a floral legion? The basic definition of a floral legion is a collection of botanically accurate plant portraits. And in the floral legion, in our first show, we have 30 participating artists with 35 works of art on display. The paintings and drawings are all accurately and botanically rep represented, displayed, and we've hung them and displayed them according to the plant communities and habitats. And along with that, we have signage that explains the habitats so that as you go along, you'll know what part of Mount Tam you're going to be able to find these paintings in, the real plants that we've done the paintings of. So that's the what. The how is, um, the exhibit began with the discussion I had with Laurel Kelly, my fellow co-chair of the exhibit. We had met at the American Society of Botanical Artists uh, uh, conference that was held in October of 2017. And our Alcatraz Fuller Allegium had just come to a conclusion and Laurel and I were talking about the need for our organization to have another group project. And so we kind of talked about what could we have, and there were some other people at the table and we talked, and we decided that Mount Tamalpais would probably be a wonderful subject. So we um, researched the logistics, the possibilities. We met with our society board 
And then we enlisted another member of our group, an amateur botanist, Kristen Jacob, to join our committee, and we were on our way. We then contacted one TAM, and we met with Monica, Lewins, Monica Stafford, who is the one TAM community ambassador, program director there. And she connected us with Suzanne Whalen, who is the watershed volunteer coordinator from the Marin Municipal Water District. And together, they guided us through the procedures for field trips with groups. I know that in the beginning, they were a little bit overwhelmed by the number of people that wanted to go on the field trips. I think they had expected 10, and I think that we at first came up with 40, and we had to pare down that number a bit. But they came up with some more guides, and we went out on two wonderful field trips. We divided into groups of 10 people. Each 10 had a guide. We walked, hiked on the mountain, discovered plants with the guides who told us which ones were native, which were rare, which were endangered, which were common plants. After walking for a couple of hours, we met for lunch, and then we decided who wanted to paint or draw which plants. And then we walked back to find those plants and do the cuttings of those plants. Now, we weren't allowed to cut everything because there are some plants that are endangered or rare and we couldn't cut those. So the artist photographed them or took some, did some sketches and made color charts so that they would be ready to paint them. Artists do prefer to really draw from life, however. Um, and thank you, Monica and Suzanne, so much because it was wonderful. And we really do look forward to being able to go up with you on the mountain again when we're allowed to go up on the mountain in groups again. Monica will be speaking to you in a little bit and she'll tell you all about what Mount Tam is all about and what they do for our mountain. So then the artists were painting. And um, so it was time to think about a show. And so I spoke with Antonia Adizio, the executive director that you just met from Art and Garden Center, and Stacy Camp, who's the events coordinator there, and asked if we could maybe feature a show in the fall of 2020. And they were both enthusiastic about it, had done other shows for our society and were wanted the fit in the garden. So that was a go, and I thank you so much, Stacy and Antonia, because you were so positive throughout the whole thing when we really weren't sure if there was going to be an exhibit. And we're also so thankful that so many of our artists were able to complete their work on, you know, through these very uncertain times. We're really pleased. Um, okay, and then we brought on another board society member because we were ready for judging of the artwork before we were ready to have it hung. Um, and her name is Lee McCaffrey. So she was gonna assist our committee with the judging and she worked with Kristen Jacob. She and Kristen spent countless hours, not only during the work, but coaching the artists and making suggestions for improving our work. The jurying for this exhibit was really crucial because the works need to be botanic, botanically accurate in all aspects. We plan to give the scans of all of the artworks to, a, to Mount Tam, to One Tam, who will eventually use them on their website for education and outreach. Why is why Mount Tamapias? Known by every, Mount Tamapias is known by everybody in the Bay Area. Uh, it's bursting with botanical treasures. We hope that by showcasing Mount Tam's unique, unique beauty, it will, be, it will encourage others to join us in protecting the mountain's treasures. It's a very special place to me personally. I've lived on or near the mountain my entire life. It's the view I have from my backyard. And whenever I travel and I see the mountain, I know I'm home. So it means home to me. I know that we all look up at the mountain and we see green, we see blue, we see trees, we see bushes, but up close, there are so many hidden treasures. You need to walk on the trails, look at the meadows, cross over the creeks, look at the hillsides. I hope that you find this exhibit of the mountain's flora 
to be an enjoyable and rewarding experience. And then when you see all of the beautiful paintings, you will want to walk on the mountain and find them. Now I come to the when. The exhibit will be open for in-person viewing on Fridays and Saturdays from 10 to 4, Sundays from 12 to 4, and by appointment through November 29th. The Marin Art and Garden Center will be following all of the necessary protocols to ensure that you will have a very safe visit. Please check the Marin Art and Garden website for workshops and classes being offered during the exhibit and for other information regarding the artwork and the artists. And then we come to the who. Thank you to all who have worked so hard to make this exhibit possible. My co-chairs, Laurel Kelly, Kristen Jacob, and Lee McCaffrey, our Botanical Art Society President, Kay Herbranson, and the members of the board, Sally Petru, who planned the educational programs for the exhibit, Again, you can check the website for those classes. Monica Stafford from One Tam and Suzanne Whalen from the Marin Municipal Water District. Stacy Camp, the events manager at Marin Art and Garden Center, and Antonia Adizio, the executive director from the Marin Art and Garden Center. Tony Moltadore at Berkeley Jaclay for scanning all of the artwork. Bill Anderson at AC Graphics for framing the framing of the art and most especially to all of the artists who have made this exhibit possible. And now, thank you all for attending tonight. And now it is my pleasure to introduce my co-chair, amateur botanist, a woman who knows all the plants on Mount Tamalpais by sight, their botanical names, and how to spell them, Kristen Jacob. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. This Floral Legion project is very dear to my heart as I was raised and still reside on the flanks of Mount Tamalpais and have always been entranced by its special beauty, habitat diversity, fauna, and in particular, its flora. In recognition of this interest, my parents joined the Marin chapter of the recently formed California Native Plant Society shortly after I began drawing plants at the age of 12. And these plants remain my favorite illustration subjects to this day. With over a thousand native plant species from which to select, we hope to de depict a large and representative sampling of the mountain's flowering plants and ferns, even some of its mushrooms and lichens over the coming years. Our goal is to illustrate the plants accurately and attractively so that the images will prove compelling and educa useful educational tools for the one TAM member agencies. Partic participating artists were able to make trips overseen by one TAM staff to the Rock Spring area, chosen for its diverse plant communities, such as mixed woodlands, stream sides, and grasslands with serpentine rock outcrops, to observe candidate species in their natural habitats, and to select which ones they wish to illustrate. As the artists worked on their plant portraits from home, co-juror Lee McCaffrey and I coached many of them to enhance the scientific accuracy of their illustrations. Each portrait needed to be identifiable as the subject species, clearly showing the characteristics that set it apart from others. As Mary G Gilardi mentioned, we have arranged the live exhibition artworks by the habitats and plant communities in which the subjects are most commonly found. This was more difficult than you might imagine, as many of the plants might occur in several habitats, and corresponding plant communities usually merge into one another without sharply defined boundaries. Scientists have identified a multitude of plant associations on the mountain, but we have simplified those into some broader categories. I will briefly describe these and some of the associated plants illustrated in this exhibit. Mount Tamalpais has many areas of exposed serpentinite, the Cal California state rock, often simply called serpentine. This rock and the soils derived from it often support rare plants that tolerate the heavy metals and low nutrient levels. The rocks are most visible as seemingly barren blue-green outcrops in grassy or brushy areas. Shrublands on the mountain might occur as chaparral over serpentine, 
or on the sandstone of the southern flanks and peaks of the mountain. Coast silk tassel and the rare Mount Timopius manzanita are two of the shrubs found in this habitat. The coast redwood forest may be found in, most, in moist canyons and on cool slopes all around the mountain, but old growth trees only remain in Muir Woods, where wild ginger is one of the common ground covers on moist flats. Grasslands occur between wooded areas and when not invaded by aggressive non-native species are often rich with wildflowers, such as blue-eyed grass and yellow mariposa lily. And scorpion weed or phacelia may be found in the rocky outcrops. Purple needle grass or state grass is often the dominant species. Mixed forests and woodlands might be dominated by Douglas fir, commonly with tan oak, sometimes madrone, or by coast and canyon live oaks, and may be dense or more open with a wide diversity of understory plants, including Douglas iris, woodland strawberry, and coastal wood fern. Look for calypso and coral root orchids under Douglas firs in the bootjack and rock spring area. Riparian or streamside habitats might weave through many different plant communities. Giant chain fern is widespread in damp areas, while the pleated gentian is rare. We hope that you will enjoy this inaugural exhibition either in person or online and be inspired to support the ongoing stewardship of this wonderfully rich botanical treasure house that presides over Marin. I now welcome Kay Herr Branson, President of the Northern California Society of Botanical Artists. Thank you. Okay, I don't think we can hear you. Are you, I think you're muted. Sorry, I thought you were gonna unmute me. I'm sorry. I'm gonna start over. Thank you for joining us this afternoon for our virtual reception and presentation of our first exhibit to the Mount Tamalpais Floor Legium. My name is Kay Herbranson, and I am the president of the Northern California Society of Botanical Artists. We have just over 200 members in our chapter, and we are affiliated with the American Society of Botanical Artists with a membership of almost 2,000. That includes individuals and institutions from all over the world. Our goals are to promote appreciation and awareness of the world of botanical art, and cultivate enthusiasm to produce this art in many different formats. Our members use a variety of paints, pencils, papers, and vellum. Many of them are represented in this wonderful exhibit. I hope that you will take the opportunity to visit us here in this lovely garden to see the artwork created by our members now showing in the studio. Perhaps you will become inspired to join our chapter and learn more about the flora of Mount Tamalpais and all things botanical. There is a budding artist tucked away in each of us. And now it is my pleasure to introduce Monica Stafford, Mount Tam One Community Engagement Program Manager. Without her help and support, this never would have happened. Thank you so much, Monica. Thank you, Kay. And Thank you, um, Marine Art and Garden Center, for hosting this event and this art show. Thank you to all the artists. It's been so much fun working with you, and my days out in the field were just a blast um, looking for plants and treasures with all of you. So I'm going to share my screen to show you some pictures of what we've been talking about. And here we go, PowerPoint. I'm going to share, and now I'm going to slideshow, I'm going to play from the start. There we go. Give a holler if you guys can't see or hear me. So, um, yeah, it's great to be here. And, um, you know, I work for One Tam, and it's the job of conservationists like myself to uh, work on the mountain and to protect not Tam and its remarkable biodiversity. 
but we, we can't do any of our work without inspiring people to care. And it's my belief that no one is able to inspire us to ponder and appreciate the beauty of Mount Tam as well as our artists. So in my very short time with you right now, I wanted to share with you um, an overview of the plants and their habitats that are featured in the show. I'll be reviewing some of what Kristen just shared with you. And um, very quickly, for those of you that are not familiar with Juan Tam, um, you probably know, but in Marin County and on Mount Tam, we have a whole mosaic of um, agency ownership. So you can see the uh, Mount Tam watershed in the black outline. And of course, if you're, um, if you're deeply concerned with the protection of the mountain and its resources, its plants, its animals, you need to think holistically. You, you need to think outside of your borders. And, um, and in a sense, that's what OneTam is. OneTam is not a, uh, a single standalone organization. OneTam is a partnership. Um, we are rangers without borders and together we're working holistically to share resources, expertise, and just to do more together than we can alone. So we've touched on this a little bit, but it's really worth repeating. What is so special about Mount Tan's flora? It's um, the amount of biodiversity on Mount Tan is just remarkable. Uh, anybody who's hiked Mount Tan knows this. Um, we have a rich and complex patchwork of plant associations that create uh, an incredible diversity of habitats and extraordinary number of species. We have found that Mount Tam has over 10% of the native plants in California. Um, and yet, uh, which is just incredible when you think about how small Mount Tam is relative to all of California. And, um, and in fact, if you were to look at species richness and see just how many plants we have per acre, Mount Tam is 10 times more species rich than Yosemite National Park, which is 20 times as big. So with that in mind, I'd like to just take you on a quick whirlwind tour of the habitats that Kristen shared with you. And uh, many of these notes that I'm sharing with you are from Kristen, who's, um, as you probably can tell, she's, she's not only one of our featured artists, but she's also a highly respected botanist in our community. So um, just a couple um, photos here, we have mixed forest and woodlands. In this photo here, we have a coast live oak, which is representative of a woodland community. And, um, and here we have a coast live oak, which is one of the plants you'll see featured in our show. And, um, and then also, of course, we have forests, which are, uh, as compared to woodlands, are, have a closed canopy. So here we have a forest made of predominantly um, dug fir, and of course, uh, in these forests, you'll also see um, a lot of um, California bay laurel, which is what we have here on the left, and the tan oak, the beautiful tan oak on the right. And of course, um, our forests support a lot of diversity in their understory. So here we have the Calypso orchid. We have here the checker lily, hillside pea. Um, we hear some miner's lettuce, an incredibly common plant, and yet a lot of us don't really take the time to look at it up close. And you can just see all the, just what a, what a little beauty it is if you look really closely at the, um, at the flowers. And here, of course, we have Douglas fir. I mean, sorry, not Douglas fir, Douglas iris, uh, which is a real showstopper. Um, again, our, you know, our majestic coast redwood forest. Um, which is so iconic and famous here. We have, of course, an, you know, such a special old growth forest, which is Muir Woods. And then also we have lots of stands of uh, coast redwood in the Moister Canyons on Mount Tam. And then once again, we have, um, we have in the understory, we have plants such as the, the, the uh, wood rose. Here we have trillium. Um, the really wild looking plant on your left, uh, again, these are all plants that you're going to see when you come into the exhibit, but that's wild ginger. Look at those incredible um, petals. And then, of course, we've got huckleberry here in fruit on the right. Shrublands. Um, so as Kristen mentioned, there's different types of shrublands on the mountain. On the lower ocean side, slopes, uh, we have coastal scrub where you'll find sagebrush, coyote brush, uh, poison oak, sticky monkey flower, California blackberry. 
And um, on the southern, more exposed, uh, hotter slopes, we typically have chaparral communities. So we're going to have, uh, we're going to see areas dominated by chemise, um, often accompanied with interior live oak, toyon. Um, and, um, and sometimes chaparral also falls into serpentine soils, which you heard about as well. And, and in those areas, you're going to find some really interesting ceanothus and rare manzanitas. Um, and here's, you know, here's a really special one. This is the Mount Tam manzanita, a rare, a rare manzanita. And we also have here the um, silk tassel. You can see how it gets its name. Here we have the, our native honeysuckle, uh, which has spectacular flowers and also beautiful red, translucent red berries in the late summer. Um, in the foreground we have lichen, but what I'm trying to draw your attention to here is the woolly sunflower with the yellow with the yellow flowers. And I love this picture because you can really see the coastal uh, scrub habitat that these plants live in. And here, of course, we have toyon in flower and toyon produces beautiful red berries in the winter. Okay, so grasslands. Grasslands, some of the most underappreciated habitats. Now, this is, a, this is an area that used to, um, used to cover much more of California than it does today. Unfortunately, we've lost a um, huge percentage of our native grasslands. But we do still have grasslands on Mount Tam. Um, we've got these incredible iconic vistas of Mount Tam where you see these patchworks of grasslands and you see stands of, of forest and shrub. And, uh, and in these grasslands, many of them are dominated by annuals, but we still find a remarkable amount of diversity and you still can find a lot of um, beautiful wildflowers intermixed with these native bunch grasses. Uh, this uh, grassland in spring is just about my all-time favorite site to behold. This is this is my this is my my special one. Um, so here we have the iconic plant of our native grasslands. This is the um, this is the uh, purple needle grass, which is the California state grass. And then of course intermixed in our grass or bunch grasses, we have lots of spaces for wildflowers. So you have here. Uh, blue-eyed grass, which is neither blue nor grass, but it is beautiful. We have here slender clarkia. Um, on the left here, we have we have California phacelia or uh, scorpion weed, and I chose this great image because it's also just a reminder of how important our native plants are as a food source for animals, and this plant is in particular a, a nectar source for butterflies, such as this um, endangered mission blue butterfly. And, uh, and here's the beautiful California brome. Um, here the purple flower, this is um, Sinicula bipinnatifida and the common name is um, purple sanicle. And here we have um, calicordis or um, mariposa lily. And uh, these are all just spectacular. And uh, moving on, we are coming to the final habitat type, which I just wanted to give you a quick tour of. Of course, we've got streams and creeks, which creates a whole different set of environmental conditions and associations of plants. So of course, you've got areas that are moist year round, you've got areas that are shady. So you're gonna have a whole special collection of plants associated with these. You're gonna have buckeyes, you're gonna have, um, um, you're gonna have big leaf maples. Um, also, if, again, from our, from our show, we have here the blue elderberry with these really cool fruits. We have Dutchman's pipe vine. Um, here on, uh, we've got this very showy, beautiful western azalea and, uh, and then also snowberry. And you can see how it gets its name. And here's the pleated gentian that Kristen mentioned. And then um, the last plant that I'm sharing with you right now, which is the um, giant chain fern or Woodwardia. So that concludes my very quick tour of some of the spectacular habitats that I hope you get to know um, and get out and see and enjoy. Um, of course, all of you have to check out the illustrations. They're, they're so beautiful and the artists are so generous to share them with one Tam. And I just want to thank all of you for that. It'll be just a wonderful outreach tool. And, um, and I also want to let everybody know, everybody know that uh, One Tam is hosting a whole series of talks throughout October um, through the One Tam Summit. And it's all about climate change, but specifically about climate change and what we're doing about it here in Marin County. Um, this coming week on Thursday, we have um, a whole bunch of talks specifically about sea level rise. 
and, uh, and there's more coming up. So please visit One Tam and click on our calendar, uh, check out our events, and I hope you can come and, um, and join us again. And you're always welcome to reach out to me directly. You can see my email there at the bottom of the screen. And with that, I will uh, wrap up. Thank you all. And I'm gonna turn it back to Antonia. Thank you, everybody. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Monica, that was perfect. Thank you so much for that whirlwind tour. It makes us all want to go out and start hiking again, doesn't it? <laughs> Some of us who haven't been. Uh, and to see the, the different seasons is really something in, the, in those slides also. And just to recognize how everything does change so often that you really just need to keep keep going out there and seeing what, what's going on. So thank you so much. That uh, That's very exciting to see. Uh, so we've had a great tour of the mountain and a tour of our show. Uh, I want to thank all the presenters for being here today and all of you who are in the audience as well and all the artists who clearly uh, are doing this out of great love for the natural environment and with great talent that they're sharing with us. Uh, the exhibit hours, uh, we're going to give you a slide at the end that just reminds you you can write down the uh, Friday, Saturdays and Sundays through November 29th. We also have three fabulous classes. Um, we're dipping our toe in uh, doing some virtual botanical illustration classes, real special opportunity with three different teachers and those dates and times are going on this um, next slide that you're going to see. And just uh, a reminder that we have all the safety protocols in place at the studio for you to visit safely and enjoy the art in person. Uh, please do come see us, take a walk in the garden and help us celebrate fall. Uh, it was great being with you all this afternoon. Thank you so very much. Thank you.